Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game, bringing you our review of Super Dungeon Explore Forgotten King. Now if it's still March 2016, there's still time for you to enter our giveaway competition Two Can Win That Game, where we're giving away two copies of this game. So the first prize up for grabs is this unopened copy here and we will be delivering that anywhere in the world absolutely free. And the second prize is this open copy that I've been using and playing with and really enjoying and I'm sad to see go. But that will be our second prize and again that will be available anywhere in the world absolutely free delivered by Two Can Play That Game. So with that out the way let's get on with the review. So let's start with just a brief summary of what this game actually is for those of you that don't know and hopefully you do because you've been watching the rest of the videos but it is a miniatures dungeon crawling game set in a 8 16 bit retro computer gamey world and the whole nature of the game is that there is the baddies the monsters you're walking around a modular board killing those monsters to gain treasure, to improve yourselves, to kill harder monsters. Now, the game actually comes with two different distinct modes of play. There's the classic mode, which if you've played Super Dungeon Explore, the original one, is the type of mode that that was, and is common probably majority of dungeon crawlers, where one person has to be your GM or your your person controlling the monsters anyway in this it's called the console and then the rest of the people get to play the heroes and of course everyone wants to be a hero and the new mode of play that was introduced in this is called arcade mode and this does allow everyone to be the heroes which is a big improvement and a big difference and something that does help this stand out from a lot of other dungeon crawls out there. What do I think of the game? Well I'm going to start with the artwork and you can tell just looking at the box here it is very chibi artwork. Personally I really like that and it, I just like that cartoony chibi feel. I enjoy it, it's light, it's fun some people will be put off by that and I'd say if you can get past the, that artwork and of course the chibi minis it is a good game and you really should try and do so but you know to each their own if you don't like chibi artwork that's fine that's what's in this game I do like it it's bright it's colorful it's playful and it's great for kids and families to play together so that's the boxes. What else have we got artwork wise? Well, there's artwork spread throughout this game. I mean, you've got artwork in the instruction manuals, just with images and pictures of equipment, little drawings here, things like this. It is spread throughout all the rule books, all the documentation. You've got artwork through all the cards, like front and backs often. Really, really attractive chibi artwork to my mind. Now, there is an exception to this, and that is the equipment cards. Now, it's not that these are bad, they're just slightly plain with regards to the artwork, um, because, I mean, they're, they're very functional from a graphic design point of view, don't get me that, don't get me wrong there, and I think it works wonderfully the way you have the four sides of a card that you can equip the equipment to, and they have the colour coding as well as the gem coding that tells you like that's a top, that's a bottom. That works wonderfully. But then the little image you actually have there of the item, they tend to be very bland, boring and not very interesting. But otherwise, lovely artwork. Uh, what else is there I want to discuss artwork? Well, there is of course the boards you're playing on. And I think these are really pretty. I think they're probably some of the best um, dungeon crawler playing boards I've actually seen artwork wise. I really love them. I mean, this one is particularly nice here where you've got the like haunted tree and the little fountain of healing and stuff. There's lots of little details and a lot of effort has gone into the design of these and I think they are really nice. Now, that's all I'm going to kind of talk about on artwork. As you can tell, I like it. But if you don't like that sort of chibi style, you're probably not going to. 
So let's talk about the components. And the first thing I want to talk about component wise is these. So of course we have two rule books here. Now, a lot of the content in both of these rule books is actually the same. So there's a lot of duplication, but I can understand that they've done it so that if you're playing arcade, you can just forget about one book or forget about the other, rather than having to kind of try and figure out. So I think it is for the best that they've done this. When you first come to this game, if you're trying to learn both modes at once, like I did, it can be really confusing flicking between them going, okay, well that's just the same text copied, etc. That doesn't quite work here because they've just copied it from the other one or whatever but it is good it is good that they have the two versions and it does work well to have the separate rule books if you are learning them separately next is this quick start guide so this is actually is a quick start guide you won't be able to use this to learn the game and play the game fully but it'll help you just get a feel for the game quickly and so it is good for that. And I would recommend giving it a little go just to help you get used to moving models around and doing a battle really is the main thing. And next we have, of course, the final booklet that comes in this, this Explorer's Handbook, which is jam packed with theme for this game. And of all the dungeon, count, dungeon crawling games I've encountered, this does that whole theme thing of drawing you into the world as a whole and the story of the world the best. And the reason for that is this booklet. Now, there are others that have a bit of flavour text and do it quite nicely. But this booklet just does so well of building up this whole story of what's going on. And it's kind of a shame that... This booklet does it for the whole world as a whole really nicely, but then the separate game doesn't have quite as much story in the actual gameplay. So that's kind of a shame, but really nice little booklet, really nice addition component wise to the game. And then let's get these boards here back out. So these are proper, thick, chunky, boards for our six game boards here they're really good high quality I've had no issues with these I've been playing and playing and playing with them and you know there's no bending going on there's nothing really nice quality I'm really impressed with those the game comes with a slew of tokens so here we have potions and hearts and the tokens are all the same card stock it's pretty good card stock and these are wearing out you know, they're lasting pretty well from all my playing. You know, there's no tearing, wearing, peeling or anything like that going on. And they actually punched out really nice and easily as well. So that's good. We have here the dice. Big component of the game. Everyone loves rolling dice. The dice are really nice, really pretty. And they're probably the thing that helps mechanically add most to the whole retro computer game feel of this. Because of the whole when you're successfully attacking you get heart, you get health. If you get a potion, a potion pops out. That's probably the thing that makes this most feel like that retro old school computer game as you're playing through. And I just, I think they're really pretty attractive. They're good, high quality produced dice. No issues on the painting, on the white bits there. And they're just attractive and feel nice in the hand. The whole semi see throughness then we have the cards. So let's start with this big pile here of the mini cards. So these are perfectly good, fine, reasonable quality. Um, there's nothing astounding about these cards. As I was saying on the artwork, you know, again, the artwork carries on here. They're nice, they're functional. Then of course we have the bigger cards, the same card stock, you know, good, reasonable quality card. There's no real wear or tear issues here graphic design on them, it's all nice and clearly laid out. So that's all good functional cards and no issues with. Now, as I already said, component wise, these cards are great for the fact that they slot under and the way those work on the equipment is really nice. So what else do we have component wise? What else could there be? Well, let's see, what's, what we got? Oh, we've got a brown box. Now, this is how the minis come. 
all together in a box. Well, they're actually in little bags in this box, but the bags aren't resealable. And then the rest of the insert is, it is better. I mean, here we have the box with the insert in. You know, it's a perfectly good functional plastic insert. It does a, a great job of keeping all the cards sorted and ready and fine. So that is fine. It's just a bit of a shame. The minis, if you're gonna paint these up, this is not a good storage solution for them. Um, that's kind of the main drawback, I would say. But then let's talk a bit about these minis because let's face it, this is a minis game and a lot of people watching this just wanna know how good are those minis? And they are lovely. I mean, some are better than others. Of course, the bigger, badder ones tend to be the nicer ones. I like that the bases have the stone texture on. That's a nice little touch. And yeah, they're just, these are pretty good, nice quality minis. And uh, can't really go wrong when you've got this many. I mean, half this box is minis and they're good quality. They, they are kind of softer plastic. You can see here, his ax has got slightly bent, which is a bit of a shame. But if we were to put this in some hot water, we could reshape that and that would solve it fine. Now, Again, if you just shoved it back in this box, it may well bend and warp again though. So you'd probably, if you're gonna sort out those little niggles, want to sort out a better storage option for these minis. But the minis themselves are really nice, really detailed. I mean, like spawn points, you've got the wood effect here. Really, really detailed, in-depth minis. They, they are just wonderful, and if you're into painting minis, you'll have a great time painting these. If you're not into painting minis, just having these on their own on the table, they are still attractive and interesting, and I think they will especially appeal to probably younger gamers, but as I say, even the hardcore gamers who are into their painting and stuff will really enjoy these minis. So that is everything in the box. So let's talk a bit about the mechanics of the game. Now, as I've said, there are the two different modes of play. So let's talk about each one individually on their own merits. So let's start with the new one, the arcade mode. Now, this can either be really hard or really easy. And it's that whole command deck can make a real big difference. You know, if you just get unlucky and get the wrong commands that mean you just get pulverized, then you can have a really hard game. If the commands happen to come out in an order that doesn't quite make a lot of sense for them to have done it that way, you can have quite an easy time with this. So it is kind of variable. Um, it is still quite a fun game. And it does also allow you to have that solo play option like I was doing in my playthrough. And I've actually been really enjoying this as a solo play game. It's probably one of my favorite solo play games because I am a huge D&D fan. Well, I say huge, a big D&D fan, but I cannot find round me a good game going with a GM who will run the game. So I was always being the GM and I just got tired of doing the GMing. And this allowed me to just have the dungeon crawl experience of an RPG without needing other people. And I could just be the heroes and go, wah, charge in, pow, pow, and have fun with it. And so that's great. I mean, if you don't want, if you want to have a co-op or a solo play experience, this can still be great fun, but there is an element of randomness in that. And it is such an epic fun adventure. You feel like you are slogging your way through this mass of monsters to finally reach your goal. It is great fun. I really do enjoy it. Now, with that said, I do think that the classic mode is better. So let's now talk a bit about that classic mode. So yes, with the classic mode, you have someone controlling those monsters. And what that means is you have true AI rather than that command deck AI that doesn't necessarily always make a lot of sense. But to be honest, that probably fits with retro gaming sometimes, because a lot of the time the AI wasn't good and you'd just be stood there watching a monster go around in circles and going, I hit you, 
Oh, he's carried on walking. Oh, here he comes again. I hit you. Um, because it was bad programming and stuff. And so it kind of works for that. But when you're playing against another player controlling the monsters as the console, you get a much more interesting, much more challenging, engaging experience. Now, I think probably the best gauge for who this would appeal to, I think it would be fantastic if you had a parent being the console with the children working together against the parent, because that way it's not too nasty that they're working together and the parent can control the game, can kind of go easy at times when they've ne maybe made a couple of little bad decisions, but still challenge the children to work together and improve. And even having said that, I mean, I've played this with friends as the console and against the console, and it is great fun. And you know, you just have this back and forth, and okay, when you're the console, because of that all these one, you can feel a bit ganged up on. But you've just got to have a bit of thick skin, and it's only one game. It's not like you're doing a campaign for years to come. You're going to sit down, you're going to have this one great, epic, enjoyable gaming experience, and then the next time, you don't have to be the console. Someone else can be the console. So I do really enjoy this. I think it is a really good dungeon crawl game. And of course, the miniatures are fantastic, which helps. So otherwise, mechanically, as I've said, the whole only having four equipment slots and the way that all works, I think is really nice, really elegant. The way it works with the successes and it's like you can build up and have super success, but still only do one damage. I'm not hugely keen on that, but it does mean that the game is more controlled. And so that is actually kind of good. There's no, ah, I destroy this monster in one mighty blow. You're always going to be chipping away and working away. There's no, oh, the luck of the dice meant I just destroyed you. And okay, there is luck in this. There are dice, there are cards, there is luck. And it is quite a luck heavy game. But there is strategy as well in the way that you approach the monsters in the way that you'll try and kill the monsters as the console there's strategy in what you choose to do with regards to spawning or moving what you move it is actually probably a higher strategy game for the console and a more interesting game for the console in many ways so both sides of this game are great fun and both modes of this game i think are good fun and definitely have a place now do i have any faults with this game not especially and of course that then just leaves one final thing and that is of course can two play this game and two can play that game of course two can play that game you know you can play either mode two player and have a great time i would say the best number to play this with is probably four or five people depending on I, I think the optimal number to play with is for f you to have three heroes, actually, I would say. Three heroes is probably the optimal number for the length of game, lack of downtime between each person's turn, etc. But obviously, if you're playing arcade, that would mean max between one and three players so obviously two would work fine although then one person is controlling two heroes in the arcade so that doesn't work as well as a two player um four heroes would work better but it does then mean it's a bit of a longer game but it means you can kind of go i do my two you do your two and you each have alternating turns so that can work quite nicely as a two player now with the console v's heroes it works great as a two player because, OK, there's not the cooperative banter amongst the heroes of like discussing how they're going to go about things. It becomes much more this head to head mental challenge that actually works really nicely as a two player game. So that's my thoughts on Super Dungeon Explore Forgotten King. Of course, if it's still March 2016, do make sure that you check out the competition. There is a link to it in the description and you can win this game for absolutely nothing. Also, if you would like to know more about this game, I do have tutorial videos uh, teaching you how to play the game 
and there is also a playthrough where I play against the arcade mode. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video, please do watch the rest of the videos on the channel, subscribe to the channel and share the channel with your friends and family. Also do check us out on social media. We're on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.